Hi there, uh, Nico from VoiceFlow. And uh, in this video, we will talk about uh, our um, example code regarding the uh, Eleven Labs integration, uh, but also how you can use audio um, in your web chat assistant. So um, to start with, we will go over the uh, Eleven Lab integration uh, code example that we are sharing in our repo. Uh, few changes here. Uh, the first thing, uh, we've added this um, handler for uh, if for any reason what you are sending uh, is not correct. At least you will be able to flag that and uh, console uh, debug this. Um, the other thing is, uh, in my demo, I will use a uh, multilingual um, um, model from uh, the uh, Eleven Labs. And to do so, I had to update the uh, integration uh, code example. And the little thing here is now you can pass a model in your uh, payload in, in the request in the uh, JSON body. You can uh, you can set uh, a model by default. We will use the uh, Eleven Labs multilingual V2 model. So meaning that if you don't set a model in your request, by default, we'll use the multilingual one. Uh, and that's, that's it. Uh, we are also removing any double quotes in the text you are sending, uh, because during my testing, I was uh, hearing weird stuff happening, mostly with the, uh, the French uh, one. Um, so yeah, we can get rid of this, because uh, this is not something we will use to um, to render the text. Um, so, speaking of this, so that that's pretty much it uh, for the uh, the code example. I have it running uh, locally. I'm using ngrok to pass uh, forward uh, to get a forward URL. Um, and what we want to do now is um, uh, basically I, I will show you how I'm handling this into a text step because again here. That the first um, video we made about Eleven Labs integration was using a voice assistant. In the uh, web chat, you don't have an audio step. But what you can do is use the text step and the markdown uh, language to basically render an audio player. Uh, so this is exactly what we are doing here. I've made a component called Eleven Labs. So uh, it's handy for me to reuse this every time I need to basically render uh, not only a text, but also an audio. So uh, let me go over this. You can see it's not, uh, it's just three uh, combined blocks. The first one is uh, a bit of a JavaScript. Uh, what we want to be sure is to create a payload that will be JSON formatted. So to do this, we are using a payload variable and we are setting uh, the text will be enter. You, can see, you will see later on uh, that I'm using the answer variable uh, as what I want to send to uh, Eleven Labs. I'm setting a, a voice ID here, and then I'm just uh, stringify the payload. So the post request will be whatever your endpoint is, and in the body, your payload, if you are using this script, uh, will be just payload. That's that's all you need. Um, and then I'm getting an audio data URI response. So this is coming from our custom integration, and uh, I'm mapping this to the uh, audio data URI. The answer. And this is where you have this little trick here. Uh, I'm using a text step, but because we do support Markdown, what I can do is have a audio player in there. So this is probably HTML. I'm setting this to autoplay, not showing it because I don't have the control param in there. If you want to show the player, you can add the control here. And the source will be just what we got from our previous API call, which is the audio data URI. Um, on top of that, because this audio player is not visible, you will be able to hear the voice, but not uh, not see the player. And this is what we want. Uh, we will also show the text. So this this is the answer coming from uh, our uh, AI set step. So let's look into this right now. In this demo, I'm welcoming the user. I'm so I'm basically sending this to Eleven Labs to have the audio for this welcome message. And to do so, I'm using an AI set step. Here you can see I uh, will use only AI set step because we don't want the response to be um, uh, visible for the user until we are getting uh, this text-to-speech audio from Eleven Labs. So 
Instead, what we want to do is use the AI set step to map whatever the LLM will give us to the answer variable. And then I'm using this answer variable in my Eleven Labs component to render the audio and to show the text as well. So this is the welcome. Uh, we are asking the user if they do have any question. We are capturing this question using a capture step, and we are capturing the entire user reply, saving this to the question variable. And the next step, and the final one is, again, using an AI set step to handle that question uh, with a prompt, very basic prompt, and saving uh, the result, the answer from the LLM into my answer variable. And then, again, we go into our component, send that text to the Eleven Labs API, get an audio URI uh, in return, render that into the text step into a non-visible audio player, as well as the text. So basically the answer itself. And we keep going here, capturing. So we keep the conversation going here within this slope. So what it looks like, let's try it. So here, welcoming the user. Hi there, my name is Tico. Do you have any questions I can help answer? And now I can say, how tall is the uh, Eiffel Tower? Um, so we are using LLM to answer that. And then we are sending the answer. The Eiffel Tower is 324 meters, 1,063 feet tall. And we are rendering this in the text step using Markdown. Uh, the other thing is, you remember, we are now using multilingual model. So I can say, désolé, je ne comprends pas. And uh, because of the prompt we are using, je suis désolé, comment puis-je vous aider? You can see that, or you can hear that we are now speaking in French because this was French. So sorry, I don't understand. And then LM flag that because of the prompt answer in user language. Now we are not only answering in user language, but we are also rendering the voice in user language. Uh, so I'm sorry, how can I help you? Um, yeah, till uh, restaurant. Uh, so I'm asking if there is any restaurant in the Eiffel Tower. Oui, il y a un restaurant dans la Tour Eiffel appelé le Jules Verne. And we got yes, uh, there is a restaurant in the Eiffel Tower called Le Jules Verne. So that's that's how you can do multilanguage. That can, how you can uh, handle uh, conversation in different language as well as using Eleven Labs to render that, those different audio. And uh, if I switch back to English, uh, why, why is the sky blue? We will get the corresponding answer, but uh, that time in English, because my question was in English, if that makes sense. The sky appears blue because of the way Earth's atmosphere scatters sunlight. Blue light waves are shorter and scatter more easily than other colors, making the sky appear blue to us. And that's it. Um, let us know if you have any questions. Uh, we have, uh, if you're not here yet, we are on Discord. You can comment and you can ask questions there. Uh, and, uh, until next one, have a good, have a good one and, uh, chat soon. Bye.